Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amanda and today we are going to be going through my July TBR. And yes, I am from the South, so I say July with at least three syllables. I'll be refraining from saying that word as much as possible because it is hard for me to hear it. Before I get into the books that I want to be reading in that month that is after June, I'm going to be doing a few housekeeping things, which is pretty normal for my channel. About once a month I like to update you and it tends to be in my TBR videos. First off the bat, I want to tell you guys how I'm doing with knocking down my physical TBR. Now where are those stats? They disappeared on me. Going into June, I had 38 books on my physical TBR. I have made quite a huge dent in that number this past month. And that is simply because I had a panic attack at one point and decided that I needed to reevaluate every single book I had on that shelf and kind of Marie Kondo it where I looked it in the eyes and I said, is there actually any possibility that I am going to read you? And if the answer was no, I got rid of it. And then also when I was looking these books in the eye and asking myself whether or not I was ever going to read them, if the possibility was eh, I also put it on the unhaul shelf because I'm tired of having books on my shelf that I just don't want to read. And I know that 38 isn't a large number, but for me it was weighing me down and it was making me anxious. So I did what I needed to do. So starting in the month of July, I'll be going in with 18 books on that shelf. Yes, that means that I either read, DNF'd, or unhauled 20 books this past month. That is fantastic. I cannot believe it. The number is finally at something that I am okay with seeing and acceptable in my own eyes. So yay! Moving on from there, I will be continuing to try to decrease that shelf as much as possible over the next few months. I'm really, really hoping that by December I can get it down to less than 10, which at this rate, it's gonna be gone by next month, but it's not really gonna be gone by next month. The next thing that I need to talk to you guys about very briefly before we get into the books is that my monthly reread schedule has changed a little bit. So it's definitely changed since I started it in January. Every single month I come to you and I'm like, hey, um, by the way, I'm reading Harry Potter instead. That is all going to kind of stop. So I have re-looked at my reread shelf and I have done a decent job with the rereads that I've been wanting to do. I haven't finished all of the series that I set out to start. Some of them I have quit, some of them I have put on pause, but I am just not satisfied when I looked at the books that I was doing for the series and realized that every single one of them was written by a white author. I have decided that I will still continue to reread these books, but I'm not going to be making videos every single month about the ones that I am rereading. I've been doing vlog styles or review style videos every single month for the ones that I've managed to get to, and I'm just not going to be doing that because all of these books are famous enough that you don't need another person coming to you and telling you what their opinion is about them. I will still be rereading most of them. I have decided for a few of them instead of rereading the whole series, I'm only going to try to tackle the first book. We'll be talking about them at the end of the month in my wrap ups like normal. So you'll get to see them there. They're just not going to have their own videos. Pretty simple. Also, and you're gonna be able to find out a lot more about this detail in my wrap up, but I will quickly mention to you all here, I am now tracking all of my books in Google Sheets spreadsheets, and I'm going to be providing information about the representation that the book has and the types of authors that I am reading. I'm tracking it for myself to hold myself accountable to read more diverse books, but I thought it would be nice if you all could see that information. So I am currently working on finding a way for you guys to be able to see that tracker, but not edit it. Hopefully the link will be down in the description. If not, it'll start appearing very shortly in some of my future videos. So last month I decided to set up a shorter TBR for myself. I only put in 10 books into my TBR, knowing that I would read more than 10 books, but also knowing that that allowed for me to read outside of my TBR a lot more. In the past, I put in the number of books that I wanted to read that month and I tried to stick as closely to it as possible. So it didn't allow for much room in the wiggle space. That's not, that's gibberish. I really liked that. So I am going to try once again, 10 books on my TBR, see how I like it. It was really hard to narrow down to 10 books. I kept wanting to add 
more and more, but no, I'm gonna stick to 10 this month, see how it feels, and if I like it, it might be something that I try to do moving forward in the future, only having 10 books on my TBR. Now we can talk about the books. So I am currently reading two books, and one of them is on my TBR for next month, one of them is not. Hey, so I originally filmed this video two days before the end of the month, and I had been in such a bad reading slump that I didn't plan on finishing either of the two books that I was currently in the middle of, and I had decided to only put one of them onto my July TBR. I have since finished that one book, so if you want to hear what I have to say about it, check in tomorrow and you'll hear my reading wrap up. So I'm going to swap out that one, which I had put on my list to continue reading in the month of July, but I am going to be putting the other one on the list now, which is Wise Man's Fear. So this is something that I've been trying to read for a few months now, and I finally started it, got about 20% into it, and I just didn't have enough time to finish it this month. So I am going to now be putting it on my July TBR, and it is the only book that I'm currently in the middle of that is going into that TBR. Back to the regular part of the video, now. So now I have nine more slots on my TBR, so let's go through what I am planning on reading the rest of the time. So right off the bat, I started a Fantasy Reads book club, and so we are going to be reading two books every single month, and actually that's a lie because in July we're going to be reading three, but we're going to be reading at least two books every single month moving forward. So we're going to have one book that we are calling our main book, and it is going to always be either a standalone or the first in a series or something like that. We are going to then also have a bonus book every single month, which will be our ability to continue on with series. So the bonus book is more of for people who liked the series and want to continue on. So to explain myself, this month our main book is going to be Never Night by Jay Kristoff, which I have a whole entire video talking about that. And then the bonus book of August is going to be Dark Dawn. And then the bonus book for September is going to be God's Grave. I think I got those backwards. The second will be the next month and then the third will be the following month. You, you get the gist. Are going to be reading Never Night Together. And then our bonus book for this month is going to be The Poppy War. And then we're also going to try to knock out The Dragon Republic. I've read this book before. I've read The Poppy War before. Those are both going to be rereads for me this month. The Dragon Republic is a book that I have not read yet. Both of those are also on my TBR. So they are taking up the next three slots. So Never Night is a book that follows Mia Cor Corvinier? Cor 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 Cornstarch? Cornstarch? That sounds about right. Yep. So Never Night we are following Mia as she is trying to train to become an assassin. The first part of the book is her finding this school where she can be trained and then the second part of the book, it's not a spoiler, come on everyone we know she gets there, she gets there and she starts training. Basically, I can't remember the exact numbers, but there's only a certain number of seats for people to pass and become assassins. And if you don't pass, then you become like a servant to this cult of assassins. And she also has this strange and mysterious gift where she can control shadows. And it doesn't seem that many other people can do it. And all of this is because she wants to be an assassin so that she can go back and kill the man who murdered her father. Really enjoyed this book. I do believe I gave it five stars. It might've been like a 4.5 star. I haven't gone back and looked at my review yet. I have to say that the first 120 pages are the slowest I've probably ever read. I'm honestly surprised that I managed to keep reading this book because they are quite slow. So after that, there is The Poppy War, which is also a reread for me. So we are following a girl whose name I have forgotten as she goes to a school to train to be a soldier. Wow, I really like school settings if you can't tell. So the Poppy War is based off of Chinese culture? Chinese, I believe. I'm so sorry if I got that wrong and it's actually Japanese, but I believe it's based off of Chinese myths and it is about this girl who is basically willing to do anything to become this great soldier and get out of her crappy life situation that she is in. And so she trains to be a soldier and while she is training, some weird things happen and she realizes she has a weird gift. Oh my God, this is the plot of Nevernight. Hobby War is also extremely dark and extremely violent and has a lot of gray characters and some moral decisions that have to be made. I do personally believe that the main character is asexual, but that I don't think is ever confirmed or denied in the book. Maybe in the Dragon Republic, we'll start talking about it more. I have no clue what the Dragon Republic is about. I have not read any summaries about it. I'm going in completely blind. I'm not gonna go read a summary so I can tell you what it's about because I don't wanna be spoiled. So the next physical book that I'm going to be reading, and ugh, this is a reread, 
for something I read earlier this year because it was so dang good. I'm rereading it again. And that is Kitty in the Ninth. Um, this book is super fantastic. I love it. It's going to be all my favorites of the year. I mean, I read Poppy War earlier this year too. So that's two books that I'm rereading this month from earlier this year. Weird. Kitty in the Ninth, the sequel is coming out in August. So I'm hoping to reread this one in July so that I can get right back into this world and fully remember everything. I listened to it on audio the first time. I'm going to be trying to, I don't know if you can see my tabs, read it physically the second time, but I might just listen to half of it, read half of it, because the reason why I want to read it is there gets to be a point where there is like 20 plus characters who are interacting with each other in the plot. And it was very confusing to read through audiobook. So I'm hoping that if I read the physical book, I'll be able to understand and tell the difference between all those characters a lot easier. Gideon the Ninth is about a girl, wow, that's a theme, who is stuck on this small planet. This genre is definitely kind of where sci-fi and fantasy meet each other. I will say that I really am enjoying that genre connection right now. So she is on this planet, it's the ninth planet, and her princess is called away to compete in this competition to get something. Gideon wants off this planet, she doesn't want to protect the royal family anymore, but she can't get away because she is an orphan who is stuck here and the royal family wants to keep her in their servitude. So then we also follow the princess. It's not multiple POVs. You're only reading through Gideon's eyes. Follow the princess Harrowheart as she is a necromancer has been called to this other planet and she needs a guard and she is too afraid to take anyone else. Her and Gideon hate each other but she takes Gideon saying that if Gideon protects her keeps her alive until the end of the competition she will let Gideon go. I'm really excited to visit this once again because as you can tell I'm already kind of losing some of the details and that is just because I listened to the audio and I listened to it so quickly and now I'm going to be tackling it once more. So get ready to see Harrow the Ninth in my August TBR because it'll be the first thing I read that month. I also forgot to mention that Gideon the Ninth is totally gay. Basically everyone in this book is gay. Yeah, it's dark, it's gay, it's necromancers, what more do you want out of it? The next four things I am going to be reading are all audiobooks, and they're all audiobooks that I don't really know a ton about, but I will quickly go through them and tell you the limited information that I know about them before I read them. So the first two are going to be for a new Guess My Reading Challenge video, and so I'm not going to go into detail about them right here, and that is going to be Serpent and Dove and Courting Darkness. The next two are two books that I am putting on my TBR because I am trying to read more diverse books and they both sounded absolutely fantastic. So I'm going to be reading Mirage and then I'm also going to be reading The Grace of Kings. So yeah, that's it on my July TBR. One more time for the people in the back, I will say that word. I'm really excited to see how this month goes and to see if I can actually get to all of these books. You will notice that I didn't put any books on here that were from my physical TBR, so the number might not change from this month to next month. That's how it be sometimes, especially when I had such a good month last month. I'm okay with allowing this to happen right now. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books or if you're planning on reading any of them. I love to talk to you about them. This has been a chaotic video and I'm sorry if there are some points where it just doesn't make sense. I'm kind of out of it. Anyways, I don't remember how my outro goes, but until next time, I will talk to you all in the comments. Bye.